Hello and welcome to my channel if you are new here and if you're returning, welcome back. My name is Rachel. I am a reseller. I sell clothing, shoes, and accessories online on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And today I want to talk a little bit about my strategy behind how I make daily sales on Poshmark without doing live shows. So if you want to hear my tips and what helps me be successful to make daily sales, definitely stick around. So if you're not new here, you probably um, have seen my unboxing videos, my what sold videos. Those are not going anywhere. I want to dive into though a little bit more into these strategy type videos and just really showing you what works for me in my business outside of the inventory that you're getting. So if you like reseller content, certainly consider subscribing to my channel. I'll do the unboxing videos still. I'll still do the 90 day updates and I want to start these strategy videos as well. So I'd love to see you again in the future video. And if you find this video helpful at any point or if you wanna just support the channel completely for free, definitely hit that like button. That really helps the channel out a lot. So I've heard and seen a lot of commotion, if you will, a lot of commentary about how Poshmark live sales are making it harder for people to sell items the traditional way. And I'm not necessarily against live sales, but I personally don't do them. So I really want to show you what I do in order to make Poshmark sales every day without doing those live shows. So before I get into it, though, I just want to explain in case you're not familiar what exactly I mean by live shows. So on the Poshmark app, traditionally you can list items and they kind of just sit out there for sale until somebody purchases them. But there's also the option to do a live show and it's literally you set a time and you run items live during an auction and you get on camera and you say here's what I have for sale and here's what it is and here's how much I want for it and then you start bidding uh, and, and people that are watching your live show will bid on the item until the auction ends and it makes that person the winner. So a lot of people have been doing live shows and a lot of people have found success with live shows. Um, it's personally, th this is not to knock the live show sellers or the live show concept, but I think that there is a, there's a right buyer and there's a right seller for that type of sale. And um, I have done live sales, not on Poshmark, but on the WhatNot app back in, I would say like 2021. Um, if you're new here and, and just a little bit about me personally, I um, got pregnant with my first child in 2022 and she was born in 2023. And I was doing whatnot shows, live shows um, up until that point, but during pregnancy, it became very hard for me to stand there for hours and talk live on camera. And then after the baby was born, um, I am a stay-at-home mom, but and I do reselling on the side, or I guess it is my it's my single source of income. But there was just no way for me to coordinate uh, live shows and you know while also caring for a baby. So not to knock it, I think they're great. I'm not to say that I wouldn't do live sales in the future. It's just it's not that it's not that season of life for me right now that it's feasible. But I found really good success still selling on Poshmark the traditional way. I also want to share just some stats about my closet, my Poshmark closet, and about my business in general, because I don't want you to necessarily take this as like what should work for everybody. And I think the background into where I'm at with my business will help sort of put into perspective also how I get these results. I don't want you to compare yourself to me you know, you may not be in the same space reseller wise as I am. So let me talk a little bit about where I am with my closet or where I was last year. Um, so 2023, I started with roughly around 800 to 900 active listings at any given time. Um, I was still working a corporate job at that time. I was pregnant. And in April of 2023, I had a baby and I also left my corporate job. And then after that, I was able to kind of put things into high gear a little bit. And so by the end of 2023, I was running about 1,100 to 1,200 active listings at any given time. Um, 
I do consider myself a bit of a volume seller. If you've been around for my unboxings and my what solds, I like to move things within 90 days. I'm not the person that sits on items and the name of the game is to bring it in, sell it, make the money, get it out of here. So um, this may not necessarily be the best advice for somebody that wants to, you know, name a price and wait until the right buyer comes along. This is with my intention of volume selling, of moving things along quickly. I do not sell exclusively on Poshmark. Poshmark typically, on average, makes up 40 to 50% of my uh, overall sales, with eBay being in close second. eBay and Poshmark typically run neck and neck as far as which one sells the most, 40 to 50%. I make about 10% of my sales, 10 to 15% give, you know, given the month on Mercari as well. So I do make daily sales on eBay too, but that's for a different video. We're just talking Poshmark. But just to put in perspective, I do list items on multiple platforms. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do things. This is just what works for me. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what works for you. What do you do that helps you generate sales on Poshmark every day, some sort of strategy, some sort of method. Maybe I didn't mention here. Let's share with each other. Let's talk about what, what's working so that we can all achieve success. I firmly believe there's enough room for everybody to be successful in this business. So let me know down below. Looking back at 2023, just looking at my stats, I sold 1,910 items on Poshmark over the course of the year, which averages out to about five sales per day. I did have a couple of no sales days technically, but all of my no sales days coordinated to days that my store was on vacation mode. So there were some when I was in the hospital giving birth, my Poshmark was on vacation mode for I think two weeks. And then there were a few times just throughout the year that I took a long weekend. Anytime that I'm going to be away from my business for more than like two or three days, I will put Poshmark on vacation mode just so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm not overwhelmed when I get home. So generally speaking, yes, I was able to make sales every single day on Poshmark, multiple sales at that. So what I'm going to do is just talk about my different strategies. I will show you on the screen some of the methods I use, some of the tools I use that help me achieve this result. So strategy number one, and this is the biggest of them all, is that I sell by offer. I'm going to put this chart up here. This is I. This is a view of 12 months of sales for me, and I took this screenshot in like mid-January. So it's a pretty overall good view of 2023 for me. If you'll notice, I made 85% of my sales either by offer or by bundle offer. Um, and by offer, it's either I send offers to people or people send offers to me. Only 15%, which is a super low number, only 15% of my sales are coming from people purchasing outright which is not a lot. If I sat there and just waited for people to buy from my closet, I would not be making very many sales. So I choose to stay very active in making offers. I use a browser extension called Pasher VA to send offers and do a few other things, but I think the offer piece is so big, it's worth talking about first. So I'm gonna show you just how I use Pasher VA to send offers to my potential customers, people that like the items in my closet so that it results in sales on a regular basis. Under actions, you see the first one is automatic offer to liker. And this is where you put in like exactly what you want the automation to do. So I have it set to send a new liker a, an offer every five minutes, offering a fixed percentage discount. So meaning every single offer is going to be for the exact amount I ask it to be. You can set it price dependent percentage discount. So if it's like higher priced item, you can decide to, you know, maybe offer more or age dependent. If it's been in your closet the longest, you can opt to send a higher percentage off or you can select by categories even. 
you know, if you want sweaters and jackets to go 20% off because, you know, it's ending the season and you want to move those versus your the rest of everything else you want only 10%, you can totally do that too. So you have a lot of control and a lot of say in how this automation sends those offers on your behalf. So I have mine selected to send 10% off offers with a fixed shipping discount of $4.99. I always use the $4.99 because it's easiest for me to keep track of. But you do have the option to use the $5.95 or the free shipping. You can also set this price dependent too. So you can say, you know, if my item is over $75, I'll offer free shipping. Or if it's under $25, I want to use the $5.25, whatever you want to do. Then you can set a minimum net earning. You can say, if I'm not going to make at least $10 on the sale, then don't send an offer. Or you can select whatever amount you want. The maximum price, you can say, I don't want offers sent to anything over $100 or, or whatever. If you have you know specialty items in your closet that you don't want to accept offers on that are higher priced, you can say that too. Um, and you can say, I don't want to send offers to anything that's newly listed. Now, I send offers right away. That's just my business model and, and how I work things. But if you wanted to say, you know, for the first five days after I listed it, I don't want to send offers. I want to, you know, see if I can get a full price sale and then I'll start sending offers after that. You can pick how many hours you want it to wait before it starts sending offers to new, newly listed items, which is pretty cool. You can exclude any new attack items. You can exclude your boutique items. And then if what you're trying to do doesn't fall in any of these parameters, you can literally just tell it which listing do not send offers on. And um, you can add those in here. If there's something super special that doesn't fall into any of these categories and you're afraid it's going to accidentally send an offer, you can say do not send offers on this one item and you can add any as many as you want in there. Um, you can see in here your history and um, save your changes and all that. So that is... Um, set it and forget it, right? Why sit there all day sending out offers when you can let the automation do it for you? And it's very highly effective, especially I have found to let it do it every five minutes. That uh, item is fresh in that customer's mind. They've just liked it. And, um, you know, now you're giving them a chance to get a discount right away. The other really important strategy here when it comes to offers is to accept offers. The Poshmark sales report, the analytics that they provide, they, they don't break down which items were sold via me making the offer or which items were sold via somebody making an offer to me. And that that's okay. Um, but I will say that I will just as often engage in a back and forth counter offer situation when people make me offers, even if they were lowball offers. And this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't get offended when people send me lowball offers. I do not think that a lowballer set out to ruin my day or offend me or anybody else when they make a lowball offer. Buying and selling is based upon what item is for sale and how much somebody is willing to pay for it. So if somebody sends me an offer, chances are if I'm making money, I'm going to accept it because I would rather take what they're offering than let it sit here and not make any money on it at all, right? So if it's reasonable, I'm going to take it. If it's not reasonable, I'm going to counter offer. And a lot of times people will counter they'll send a low offer just because they want a counter or they want to see if you're active or if you even have the item to ship, right? So I think it's important to still send the counter offer. Worst case scenario, they decline it. They ignore it. They don't accept. Maybe they're going to counter offer you back and you get into a little back and forth. It's all part of doing business, but I think it's important to do to, to engage with, with people that are sending offers. Again, that's just what works for me. And then the other thing that the... Um, Pasher VA unfortunately doesn't do that I do kind of have to do manually sometimes is if I see that somebody has liked multiple items in my closet, I will stick them in a bundle and I will offer a bundle discount. I don't get a ton of sales that way, but the automation is not going to recognize that and put those in a bundle and send those offers. So every once in a while, maybe once or twice a day, I'll just kind of scroll through my likes and I will um, send those offers out manually. And then every once in a while, I do make a sale that way as well. Another thing that's important on Poshmark when it comes to making sales is sharing. And this is a more 
uh, indirect way to make sales because sharing does not necessarily guarantee a sale. It does not necessarily guarantee a buyer, but it keeps your listings at the top of the search. Um, it does put your items in the forefront. It lets people know that you're active. It shows you in the corner like how long ago it was updated. And when you share an item, um, it the updated date and time will show the last time it's shared. So I know me personally, if I'm shopping and I see five of the same item and one item, you know, let and, and let's say they're all the same price, but let's say one item was just recently updated, you know, 10 minutes ago or an hour ago, and the other item hasn't been updated in three months, I'm probably going to gravitate toward the item that has, um, that, that has just recently been touched because I know that seller is active and there's a lot better chance that if I make them an offer, they're going to accept it or counter, or at least they're going to ship my item on time. At least that's my thinking. So it's very important that you share. It helps the algorithm. And I also do not share manually. That is a thing of the past. I use Posher VA to share as well. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like and how I have mine set up. It's really easy to set up Posher VA to do your sharing for you. So you don't have to sit there and manually share your closet because really who has time for that? So I typically turn mine on in the morning. You could theoretically let it run all day and all night if you wanted to. I like to just let it run while I'm awake during daylight hours. I figure that's when I get the most use out of it or the most visibility is when most people are awake, but it's totally up to you how and when you want to share your closet. So once you have the browser extension installed, then your first option is share. So you get a few different options here. Um, you can rearrange how you share your items. Some people like to have their closets in a certain order. I am not that person, so I'm not gonna speak to that. But if you are that person that, you know, you have everything organized by type or size or something like that, you can save your layout so that it will share in the same order every single time. Um, me personally, I just let it share randomly. So that's kind of what I'm going to demonstrate today. You can schedule automatic sharing. I don't usually schedule because I, I work on my um, store, my, my listings like seven days a week. So I just turn it on when I want to. But if you want to schedule, you can say, okay, every day at you know 7 a.m. I want you to run and then run again at 9 a.m. or whatever you wanna do. It just depends on how often you wanna share and how many items you're sharing. Then you, t you select type of sharing. So I'm sharing to my followers, my closet. Then you can pick your sharing speed. Um, there's a few different options. I have mine set on medium. Actually, usually I keep it on slow. So for this purpose, I'll put it on slow because that's usually where mine is at. Um, and basically it's just how fast does it share items? So you can share them faster if you want, but you have a limit of, of how many you can share each day. The, the last thing you wanna do is get yourself in Poshmark jail. So instead it's better just to share them slowly throughout the day. So I usually pick slow, but it's up to you how often or how quickly you wanna share your items. Um, then you can decide what to share. You can say how many you wanna share, I keep it on share only available items. I don't see a point in sharing your sold items. I like those to stay at the very bottom. Um, you can reverse the sharing order. Again, if you're somebody that likes to keep your listings in order, I don't care about that. So I don't have that turned on. I do turn on randomize and it's always share eligible listings to parties always selected. So I just leave that. And then I select, select continuous sharing. So. I can decide how many times I want my entire closet to be shared. So I usually pick like four. And when I hit start, you'll see it's running. It's preparing the items to share. Um, yes, I am filming this at 531 in the morning because the baby's not awake yet. So it is what it is. Um, it takes a second to prepare to share. And then once it gets started, it will show you what item it's sharing and how far along it is in the process. So for me right now, I think I have about 900 active listings as of today. So it'll probably take my closet mm, maybe about four hours to share 
a, a full cycle of four closets. Okay, yeah. so there, there we go, and it's starting to share. It's going in random order. And so these items are literally just going to share in the background. And my closet is sharing pretty much all day. It'll run till about noon since I started it, you know, maybe 11 o'clock. I will probably give it a break and start it again around 2 p.m. so that it runs 2 to 6. If I have any left after that, um, then I can maybe start it again a third time. But that's typically how I do it. I try to keep it running, I don't know, at least maybe 8 to 9 hours a day. Again, you can play with how many active listings you have versus how fast they share. If you want it to just share continuously 24 hours a day, you can totally do that as well. I have mine set at 95. They recommend 8,000 in your daily sharing in a 24-hour 24 24 period. I have never um, had an issue sharing 9,500. I've heard 10,000 is the limit. Um, they're saying 8,000. Mine's somewhere in between. Again, use your discretion. You don't want to get in Poshmark jail. But again, I've never had a problem doing this number. So do, do keep that in mind. Closet clear out is really important too. And I don't actually make a lot of sales during closet clear out because I'm sending those 10% off offers like all the time. When I do a closet clear out, I don't necessarily see a bunch of sales from it because all the people that are receiving that notification that I dropped the price already got that offer when they first liked the item. But what it does is it helps me keep my prices competitive. So if I drop it by 10%, a lot of times I get new likers, right? And so those, my Posture VA will automatically send a new 10% off with discounted shipping on that item. And so all the people that liked it previously will then get another offer for 10% off. So it's dropping the price again. So closet clear out, no, I don't get a ton of, of bites necessarily when I first drop that price. But then when someone else likes that item, boom, it's more likely to get a sale. Once my items have been sitting for a while and I've dropped the price maybe as low as I'm willing to let them go, or it's just been a while and it's time for me to delist, relist, and reevaluate. I don't actually use Pasher VA for that. I use List Perfectly um, because I use List Perfectly to cross post on all my other platforms eBay, Poshmark, Mercari. I use their inventory management dashboard and I do everything through there. And I'll show you why it's important for me to do it through there just based on how I have it set up. If you're not using List Perfectly or if you're not cross-posting, um, you could use Posture VA for this as well. Posture VA will automatically delist and relist as you have it set up. But List Perfectly is also a great way to do this as well, especially because what I do, and, and this is not necessarily Poshmark related, but I will delist and relist on every single platform and give it a refresh on every platform. I don't think it's necessarily as important to do that on other platforms as it is on Poshmark, but I figure it doesn't hurt anything. So that's really how I do it. And I'll, I'll show you how that works as well. So I am not the type of person that holds myself to a certain number of listings per day. I hear lots of people say, I'm going to list five items every day or 10 items every day. And I am just not, I'm not that person because there's so many other tasks I need to do all the time that I have found as long as I list every once in a while or several times a week, it's not, there's no point in holding myself to a certain number of listings per day. So what I do, and again, I sell on multiple platforms, as you can see here, everything's listed on at least eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, potentially Kitizen, depending on what it is. I draft listings several times a week and then I sort of cascade them out as time allows in between other tasks. Um, that is one task I don't need to be sitting in my office to do. But delisting and relisting is really important on Poshmark. And so uh, me personally, I figure if I'm going to delist and relist on Poshmark, it's probably a good time to delist and relist on every platform, which is why I don't use Posher VA to delist and relist. Also, too, because the item number changes and it wouldn't be linked in my catalog anymore. And so if you're not familiar with List Perfectly, when you um, when you when you put an item into your catalog and you cross post it, th the way that it keeps track of that for you is that it keeps the item numbers 
and which platforms it's on. So when you go to delist it, then it knows which items to delist. And if the item number changes, it's not going to delist properly. So I choose not to use that delist relist in Pasha VA simply because I have this tool that just serves me better personally. Now I said, like I said, if you are um, somebody that doesn't cross list or if you're not worried about your inventory management catalog, you could do it that way, but instead I do it this way. So I uh, like to sort it by created and I can see what my oldest listings are and I can also see then when it was updated. So this poor jacket here has been listed since 8-4-2020. Um, typically, I don't keep items in my closet that long, nearly that long. However, this was from my personal closet. So I, it's one of those things that's kind of just sitting here unless someone wants it because it's like mine. <laughs> but otherwise, um, very few things stick around that long. But anyway, I can see which items are the oldest. And I can also see like when's the last time they were updated. So um, I know just kind of personally these things here these first couple things are anomalies, but if I scroll down to about right here, I can see, okay, these items here, some of these were just relisted, 2324, 2524, but like these, 111323, probably a good time to delist and relist. 122923, mm, not quite yet. 51723, I can probably delist and relist that. And so, I can kind of just pick what I want to delist and relist and select them all. So anyway, I can pick which ones I want to. I think I did just delist and relist that one, this one too. Um, and then I just click the arrow, select all, and end listing. And what it's going to do is pop up across the top all the items that I'm ending on all the different platforms because I figure if I'm going to delist on Poshmark, I might as well delist and relist and refresh on everything else. I don't think it's as necessary as it is on Poshmark, but I do think it helps. Anytime that I don't have items to list, which is not all that often, let's be honest, I usually have stuff to, to list all the time, um, but it's a good way to bump the algorithm even if I'm not listing new items that day. So now all of these are ended. If you're not familiar with List Perfectly, this is just kind of how it works. It opens up each tab and then you can see that it's been ended and you can close the tab. I like to just watch and make sure everything says successfully ended. If Yeah, see like these, I have already sent an offer on these recently, so it's not going to let me. So I have to, you know, good old Poshmark change the size, list the item, and then I can edit and delete. That's one thing I love about List Perfectly. You do have to do like manual human checks to avoid, because otherwise if I would have just closed that tab, it wouldn't have delisted and I would have relisted it and then there would have been two listings, which nobody wants that. So, um, so now I can see that if I refresh, Those items that I just delisted, they all went to unlisted, and now you can see they're on no platforms. Now that I've delisted all these things, it is uh, a good time for me to go through and just decide if I want to maybe update the price on any of them. Um, you know, maybe they're not selling, so I want to adjust the price. Uh, or if I need to change the descriptions, or if I need to like update the photos or whatever, it's now is a good time now that they're not listed. So I do kind of just glance through and decide, you know, does anything need to be updated? The, uh, the there's one that I I've used it and I I do sometimes, but it's not a lot of times. Um, the My Shoppers tool, and when you use My Shoppers, basically it will allow you to send a pre-written message automatically to anybody that's made a purchase from you or that has a bundle with you. And I personally don't, I feel like it's spammy. I don't like it when people send me messages 
Like if I bought from you one time two years ago and I get a message from you every two days that you're having a sale, I'm probably going to block you. And I don't want people to block me. Some people don't mind it. I don't like it. So I use my shoppers, but I do it very intentionally. And I, um, I, I just, I do it maybe once or twice a year. Like maybe like this, like 2023, I did a birthday sale and I think I did a Black Friday sale. That was it. That was it. And, and I just, I don't, I don't like to spam people, right? It's just, but I will say that when I did it, I did make sales from it. There are a couple of other strategies that are out there that I've kind of tried and I don't personally partake in. I know that some people will add the item, like if, uh, if somebody likes an item in your closet, they will add the item to a bundle and then comment on the bundle or send a bundle offer that way. I personally don't do that either. I, um, I, unless it's somebody liking multiple items, I don't find that that's worth my time. Uh, I, it's easier to just let the automation send the offers when the offers come in. And the other thing I don't do is promote my closet. I did the Poshmark beta test where they gave us like 30 days of promoted listings for free. I tried it and I made some sales during that time. And then I did one more month where I actually paid, I think it was like 50 bucks or something. And I paid to like promote the listings myself for another month. And I just, I did not feel that there was enough um, boost in my sales to justify the cost of paying for it. So You'll have to let me know too in the comments if you found success with that, but I don't, I do not think you need to promote your closet, at least not at this point. It didn't seem beneficial or worthwhile to me. And I'm certainly open to suggestions if maybe I'm missing something or maybe it's gotten better. It's been, I think, a good six months since I, I tried it. It was like when they first, first rolled it out, I was able to do that free month. But uh, I personally don't, I think if you're doing all these other things, you um you really don't need to promote your closet and that's again as of the filming of this video things are ever changing maybe they'll revamp it or enhance it but right now i just i i don't i don't do that at all it do just doesn't seem worth it to me so that is all of my tips that's what's been working for me i have been thriving selling on poshmark without live sales and i uh, i'm so glad i'm finally able to share with you uh, kind of what's working for me. So if you haven't already, please let me know in the comments. Do you do any of these things? Do you do anything different? Or maybe there's something I didn't mention at all that you think would be helpful to others. Definitely comment down below. Let's make a discussion out of this. Let's share our best practices with each other. If you've been watching my channel a while, let me know how you like this kind of video. If you found this beneficial and helpful, I, uh, I would love to know what you think. I do intend to make more videos of this kind. So I welcome your feedback on this first one. If you're interested in Posher VA or List Perfectly, they're both linked down below. Um, Posher VA, you can try it two weeks for free and then um, it gives you 20% off your first month with my affiliate link down below. List perfectly. Also, you get to try it free. I think it's like five days and then you get 30% off your first month. So both services I highly recommend. I use all the time. They really are the backbone of my reseller business and Posture VA, especially for Poshmark, really takes the, the time. It gives me back a lot of time when it comes to Poshmark specifically. So I can't say enough about it. It's worth every penny. And List Perfectly helps me manage everything that I do for my reseller business as a whole. So both great services, both highly recommended. Yeah, I definitely encourage you to check them out if you're not using them already. But that is it for today's video, friends. I certainly appreciate you tuning in and I will catch you in the next one.